<laughs> it's cutting time. We are once again working on the wide body Supra and today we are going to mount the wide body kit for real. We are going to permanently mount the wide body kit. The kit is currently held on by these Clico pins, but it's not actually hard mounted and we have the bolts and rib nuts now mounted in permanently. It has been measured up many times and after a lot of fitting and testing, this is where we want the kit to be. So here's what we have to do. The first thing that we have to do is take off the body kit from being temporarily mounted on. Then after that, we need to take this wheel and twist it back and forth to start to get the clearance and then we can mark out the area to cut. Once we have the area marked out, we're actually going to go back, attach all the rib nuts for the wide body kit. The reason that we're doing this first is because that way I can reattach the body kit and make sure that none of it will be interfering with any of the cut lines as one final check. And then after that, we're going to jack the car up, take the wheels off, and then cut the car, which I'm kind of nervous about. Every once in a while I'm working on the Supra and I think, man, this car's looking pretty cool. And then I remember, this is my car. Honestly though, sometimes I do actually forget that this is a car that's actually mine. So yeah, I'm happy right now. This is so nice, man. We've literally only done one step, but I, but I just wanted to take a break to show you because just seeing it all pinned up without the Clico pins just looks so good. I mean, it just like looks flush and I love it. So the next step for us though is to get these flares back off and lift the car up so that way we can start to measure more clearances. So let's get the flares off, let's get this car up in the air and then I'll show you what I mean. The car is now up and with the wheels unlocked, we can now move these wheels to see how well they actually clear. So if we take this, give it a turn, we could see that we're hitting the inside of the fender right there. So this means that we're gonna have to take out the fender liner on the inside as well as still trim back a lot of this area here in order to clear once the car is down. Because of course, with the wheel down, there's a lot more clearance up top. Now when we go the other way, we hit the same issue and unfortunately, I had a little fear of this. We're too close to this metal, which means we need to trim this even more, which I don't want to do at all. So what we're going to do now is we're going to take the wheel off, take off the fender liner on the inside, refit the wheel and see where that leaves us room wise. And then again, we could adjust from there. A lot of the way we're working at this is doing one step at a time, doing minimal adjustments. So that way we're not overdoing something and creating more work later down the road. So let's start by taking out the fender liner. All right, I got the fender liner out and here's where we're at. So moving back this way, we're actually good. So this is with the wheel all the way turned and we're not hitting anything in the back. Now this doesn't mean that we're completely in the free. Going the other way though, at right there we're hitting the front splitter. So we are going to need to trim that back. We're gonna take off about two inches to right about here. It's a little tough to see, but right about here, just cut that straight back. So the next step is to start cutting. <laughs> I'm excited. There is a lot more space now, so uh, let's check it out. So when we pull it again all the way to this side, we are clear, I, I, as you'd expect. If there weren't any issues before we cut, there still aren't any issues afterwards. Then on this opposite side, I didn't even cut that, I forgot. All right, I cut it. Anyway, the wheel now clears in the back, as usual, like we said, just fine. And then in the front now, that's at full lock, not hitting anything. So we do have one more way to test it though before we drop it down and we're gonna grab the jack for that. 
All right, so this is essentially with the wheel having full pressure on it. And so now we can see on the inside that it's not hitting anything. You do want to make sure that we can cover the top of this so that way it's not going to cut into the wheel. And for that, we're using these plastic seals. Essentially, they just slide right over top. We're going to have to trim them in a couple different spots, but this will work. We are going to clean this cut up, but essentially with this on, we are good to go. As for the rear wheel, the first thing we need to do is get it off. And with that off, we need to actually take this piece of trim off before we can start cutting. Now, the only reason we're leaving this back one on because the back one is actually already messed up on the corner, so I don't mind cutting this one. But this piece is nice, and I don't want to cut into trim that they don't manufacture anymore because I'm a smart person. That being said, if you have Mark III Super Trim and it's kind of garbage and you don't mind someone cutting it up and you want to trade for this trim, hit me up on Instagram because I would like to have trim, but I am going to paint over everything and I don't want to waste good trim. So we're going to cut all this out and then we'll meet up for the next step. We've got this completely trimmed up now. So we cut out the outside. We essentially cut like fins on the inside of the fender liner, and then we hammer those out to give ourselves room. Now we're gonna get these tacked in, but just not right now since I don't have a welder and I'm gonna have to schedule that with a friend. But this is all good to go. Our wheel is now fit, and just like that, the back is done. So we can start trimming the actual flares themselves. So the super's on the ground now, but I made a couple changes that are gonna affect the way that we trim. So I adjusted the spacers in the back and in the front. So the front now it doesn't have any spacers and the rear spacers are an inch shorter. So what this means is that we have less to trim out on the back and then on the rear of the car we have less to trim out on the front. So that's the next step is to get this trimmed out. We're just gonna take a little bit off the front here, curve it out, cause the tire would still hit right there in the middle and then do pretty much the same thing here. Now it's not gonna hit as it is right here, but only if we drive straight. So we need to trim that back so that way we could still turn the wheel fully in and out. Oh, the flares are trimmed up and they look so good. I am ready to pull this car outside, get it cleaned up, and then let's look at it. I have not washed this car since I bought it. Let, let's get it cleaned up for the first time since I've owned it. Oh, just look how good that looks. We have the flares mounted, the wheels mounted, everything is good to go. This car is drivable. Rear flares are perfectly set up. Everything is so good. I can't wait to start taking this on test drives and making sure that it works well. Even from this other side, oh my goodness, that is so good looking. This was, this was nice. This has been so great. Such a good, good time. I am, I am very happy with how this turned out. I can't stop staring at it. Thank you guys so much for watching. Can't wait to do some more work on the Supra. I'll see you next time. Adios.